I was 11 when my father took me to my very first baseball game at Fenway Park in Boston. We sat in the bleachers. Tickets back then for a bleacher seat were 50 cents. Yeah, it was a long time ago. But I was watching the Red Sox warm up. And when I did, I knew, I knew right then and there that I wanted to be a part of the game of baseball. So I turned to my dad and I said, you know, someday I'm going to be on that field. And my dad, like any good dad, said, I'm sure you will be. But in his head, I'm sure he was thinking, what other kind of dream do you got, kid? That's what's interesting about all of us. We've all had a childhood dream. And not all of us are lucky enough to have it come true. And I certainly didn't know it at 11 that my dream would come true, but it would. Because eight years after I saw that first game with my dad, I walked onto my first professional baseball field at the age of 19. And then eight years later, my dream eventually, finally came true because I walked onto my first major league field at the age of 26 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I became the third youngest umpire in the history of Major League Baseball at that young age of 26. My dream, it came true. My dream, you know when you get a dream, there's always consequences to a dream. My dream came true. But you know what else? I had to think about who I was because during those eight years that took me to make it to Major League Baseball, I learned something about myself that was different. It was something that when I was growing up, I was told it was evil. I was also told that it was sick. I was also told that no one who was like me could ever be a part of professional sports because there was no one who was like me in professional sports. I had come to learn that I happened to be gay. And so at that moment in time, I had to make a decision about my life. Do I want my dream, the one that not everybody's dream comes true? Do I want that? Or do I want my personal life? Well, for me, my decision was very simple. My personal life had to go on hold, and I took my dream. And that's when I started to live what I called my double life, my secret life, always looking over my shoulder and making sure that no one would ever find out my secret. You see, society, professional sports, and sometimes employers, they make you live in a box. A box maybe the size of this one. And if you don't fit into that box, you have to climb in it and snap it shut yourself so that no one will ever find out your secret. And in order for you to stay in that box and keep your secret safe, you do something that you're told by your parents never to do, something that you're told by your peers never to do and something that is told by your employers never to do and the one thing that you actually do is you lie you lie about your, your your personal life and then you lie to your family and to your friends but most importantly you lie to yourself about who you truly are and I think one of the most important things that people don't understand is that when you live in a box and you bring it to work every day. There are things that you do at work that you'd never thought in your life you would ever do. And one of those things is that you hide everything from everyone. You might have this wonderful life at home with a partner, but you can never bring it to work. Heterosexuals take that for granted every single day that they come to work. One instance is, is that they will have a picture of someone that they care about. This little picture frame is on someone's desk always on someone's desk and it's always there because it gives people the hope that they can get through a hard day. They look at it at the end of the day and say thank you for being a part of my life. But the, for those of us who happen to be lesbian or gay or bisexual or transgendered, we're afraid to put this picture frame on our desk because we're afraid that someone might come into our, our office, come up to us and say, why are you throwing your sexual orientation into my face by having your partner's picture on your desk? You see, I don't understand that. I have been, a, you know, met many people in my life and the majority of them have been heterosexual. Not once in my entire life have I ever thought anyone was throwing their sexual orientation into my face by showing me a picture of someone that they care about, their wife or their husband, their kids, 
what I thought was that they were giving me a gift, a gift of letting me into their life. Well, for those of us who are LGBT, we want to do the same thing. We want to be able to let them into our personal life. We want to be able to come to work and after a weekend, and they say, what did you do this weekend? Well, I'd like to say I went to the ball game with my partner, Keith, or whoever my partner is, and say, that's what I did this weekend. What did you do? Instead of having to say, I went to the ball game with my girlfriend, or I didn't do anything, I stayed home. It's so much easier to be able to, to not lie and tell the truth, and then feel more comfortable at work, so you can be more productive at work. There's this misconception about lifestyle and sexual orientation. I remember once speaking in front of a, a large athletic audience, and I asked someone, when did you decide to become a heterosexual? When did you decide? And all these young athletes were yelling out dates, May 6th, May 9th, all these dates that made no sense. And I picked on one young man and I said, you know, when did you become a heterosexual? And he told me, June 16th. And I remember that date just like as if he told me yesterday. June 16th. I said, why is that date significant? Because that was the day I was born. And I wanted to go over to him and hug him. I thought maybe he might hit me, but I didn't want to do that. But that's the, that's the point. I was born gay. I didn't choose to be gay. My lifestyle, I love to travel. That's my lifestyle, and I can change that especially if I run out of money, but I will never change who I am because I was born on October 5th. That was the day that I became homosexual. I started this conversation with the dream, my dream, of being an umpire. What's the dream at work? What's that dream? Well, I think it's simple. The dream at work is you want to come to work every single day and knowing that you're valued. You want to come to work every single day and knowing that you're safe. To know that you can respect who you are and get the respect from your fellow co-workers. That to me is the dream. To know that you're valued, that you're safe, and to be who you are. That's the key. That to me is the dream. The dream to be respected and respect others for who they are.